related to the release of Eddie Cable, which just launched version 1.4, actually one of the most significant releases we had after like 1.0. It could be 2.0, but I don't like, I keep the 2.0 version number for something bigger. And we'll probably talk about it today. Maybe not, we'll see. But before we are gonna start discussing the release and the features and the futures, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about the Anycable timeline or how we got here. Uh, and it's pretty long. Actually, you see, we starting from 2015, but that's not, uh, technically it's not a part of Anycable story. It's when Action Cable was announced at RailsConf in Atlanta. Uh, 2015 was the first ever presentation mentioned in Action Cable, and it's and it was introduced the same year, or maybe the next year. I don't I don't remember in Rails 5.0 release. And soon after that, uh, I started working on something. You probably remember the acceptance of Action Cable. It was mixed, and um, a lot of people were telling like with sockets and Ruby Rails, that's gonna suck. And for sure, it wasn't perfect, especially in the very first days of Action Cable. There were a lot of re internal refactoring and improvements made. For example, getting rid of event machine uh, was nice. But I already worked on something close to Action Cable even before it was announced as a part of my work. And we also have a, had a kind of a framework for building real-time stuff. But we never used Ruby as a server. We used Erlang back in the days. And as soon as any action cable was announced, I decided so there is no reason to build something separate from what already in Rails. We need to kind of cooperate and we need to make, to build something that would be both powerful, performant, and compatible with action cable. And that's how the idea of any cable appeared. And I started working on it seven years ago. It's like about, it was July, 2016, when I started building something. And in the end of the year, we, made an announcement at kind of first release of action, of any cable. And we called it Action Cable on Steroids. That underlined uh, the idea behind any cable, which we had for many years, that it's just a plug and play replacement for Action Cable server, but not nothing else like clients, Ruby code you write uh, stays the same. You just switch from, to a different server. We, and we kept this idea for many years. So the first production installation of any cable happened year after the first release. And it was for one of Evil Marsh, actually for two of the projects Evil Martians worked on back in the days. There were not large installations, they were just kind of mostly for proof of concept and polishing the library, the project for making it easy to use, easy to deploy, and so on. And 2018, any cable started to get traction outside of Evil Martians. Partially due to a lot of conference talks I gave around the world, starting from Rotself actually, then it was RubyKaigi and RubyConf. So kind of we tried to cover all the world uh, with cables and it worked out and we got first users out of our friends. We started working hard and getting more feedback and we started working hard on the major release. And it took two more years from that point to finally say that, yeah, we have any cable 1.0 and the primary goal stayed the same to be as easier to use for rails developers as a replacement for action cable as possible. So we created interactive installation stuff, uh, a lot of documentation and so on, a lot of conventional configuration stuff included into any cable. So you don't need to worry about configuring it, setting up and so on. That was an important release and seeing that. I think adding cable become one of the most popular tools to build production level application, but it still uh, stayed as the add-on for action cable for those who outgrew the possibilities of Ruby and Rails. In 2021, uh, we released the Pro version. It included more performance-oriented uh, features like binary protocol support and less memory consumption and so on. So again, we targeted larger installations of any cable to make them save more from using Pro than they could with just open source version. The same year, we made a first step towards getting separated from Rails and uh, released our official AnyCable client SDK, which works in any JS and uh, runtime, like Node.js, uh, React Native, or just a browser. And that was a required step to 
continue moving to Anycable 2.0, which should be a standalone framework, not just an action cable add-on. But that's that's we're still not there. A year ago, uh, I presented a talk at RailsConf, which was the main driver for the upcoming releases, because at one hand, I demonstrated current limitations of action cable and any cable as well, because it's just a different implementation of action, what action cable does in terms of data consistency and other stuff related to how we build real-time applications. At the same talk, I demonstrated some early proof of concept of what's eventually led to any cable version 1.4, where we finally introduced features that deviate uh, from action cable, but not like deviate actually, but extend it. We still build on top of Action Cable tooling and on top of Action Cable protocol, but we enhance it to support reliability-related features, uh, which we talked about this week uh, on Twitter, you probably saw it, and um, which we're going to talk about later. We're preparing a blog post announcing the release, but I can just show a quick overview of this blog post. So it's a kind of a review of the features. I, I will show some quick demo after this uh, slide. The number of features that were launched in V1.4 is large. Uh, we didn't expect that large because the, the primary reason for this version was introducing reliable streams. Uh, that's something I described in the talk at the RailsCon. So the ability for clients to retrieve messages that were broadcasted while they were disconnected and everything is done at the protocol level. So you don't have to deal with this at client side logic or server side logic it just works and that's the main idea that can probably differs any cable solution from other potential solution is that we think that if you use some real time server and you send data to clients the reliability of this data transmission is the responsibility of the real time server it's no longer just a websocket server or websocket proxy it's better to be called a real time server because it does much more than just handling connections and retransmitting data. We move this responsibility as a server to let developers not worry about it at all. So you don't need to care about it. You just use a client which supports the protocol. That's the only requirement. And your server set code stays the same, but you have delivery guarantees just for free with this. Another important feature is simplified mode for Heroku and other platforms, we call it. Like it's mostly for Heroku, but it's actually Everyone could benefit from it. Uh, RPC over HTTP. Probably this video is the best one. Animation. One of the biggest challenges with any cable was uh, its infrastructure overhead. So we have a WebSocket server. We still have a Rails app, and we need to run a separate instance of a Rails app running gRPC server. And the reason for that is that we always targeted performance, and gRPC is really good for that. It's proved to be an ideal communication protocol for this kind of work. But as it turned out, not every application is RPC heavy. Not, not everyone handles a lot of incoming WebSocket messages. That's where RPC comes into play. And for lower rate of messages, calling HTTP is good enough. I did some benchmarks, and I implemented the HTTP version of this protocol. So HTTP version is just a Rails uh, rack middleware. You embed it into Rails, and that's it. The same application instance serves both regular HTTP request and any cable HTTP request. You don't need to deploy multiple stuff, multiple versions of your service. You only need to take a bit of care of uh, balancing this request, since uh, if you're using Puma, you have a limited number of workers to process. So that's still not the best, probably, for high load performance. But for smaller apps, it's a viable choice, and it drastically simplifies the deployment. Beyond other features, we got long polling support. I will show you soon how it works. I, I resisted to introduce fallbacks for a long time because I believe in WebSockets. I was sure that we, in 2020s, uh, we don't need any fallbacks. But at the turn out, there are still businesses that run behind very strict corporate networks and stuff, and they spoof your encrypted traffic and block WebSockets. So we still need something built on top of HTTP. One interesting feature of and again, well, version 1.4, it's a pro feature. It's all CPP protocol support, open charge point protocol. Nowadays, especially here in Seattle, I, every second car is electric car and we have a lot of charge stations. So they have a protocol of communicating with the control center. So the software which controls transactions, controls power level, whatever, the communication is happening over WebSockets. So every charge station connects through WebSocket to server, which performs the management of this 
station and they use a specific protocol. There are companies that want to build this management software in Rails or in Ruby, and they were struggling with connecting this custom protocol with their Rails app. So we added support for it to any cable and uh, any cable now can consume LCPP clients, translate their requests into action cable commands, and you can build software to control charges with Rails and action cable without thinking about implementing the protocol yourself. Well, it's still kind of an early thing, but if you were just building something for EV charging software, you may now use Rails and any cable is a man in the middle, I would say here in a good sense. So just a pre-announcement of the blog post. What else do we have here? Maybe we have some questions. The question from Manila was uh, about this chart, right? So here's the benchmark. What's the, what are the axes? So the vertical axis shows the latency. So it's in milliseconds. So here is, we have 95th percentile showing round trip latencies, basically. So that's how fast a message is broadcasted to all the clients. And uh, on the horizontal axis, we have the number of clients. It's just a simple local benchmark with not a lot of clients, just 2,000 and a half. And we see that with HTTP RPC, but we still have uh, a bit more higher latency than with gRPC. But this benchmark is not kind of RPC heavy. We perform it only to subscribe, authenticate, and perform actions. So just every client sends uh, just free uh, calls, not that much. At the same time, we see that with action cable, well, that, it, it was always like that. So the latency grows linearly and it goes up and up. But basically that shows that if you your RPC calls rate is moderate, then the overhead of using HTTP compared to gRPC from the any cable perspective, so from a real-time perspective, is not that big. Let me continue talking about other stuff we actually shipped along with the release, but kind of in the shadow. So we have a website called AnyCable Playground. It's still very early days. It's kind of a, a tool to debug, to play with different client-side settings. Uh, so we have support for transport and protocols here from your browser. So you can just point to URL, connect and subscribe. Currently it's also use predefined channel name, but in the future we want to upgrade it into kind of full featured multi-purpose client, uh, browser-based client for action cable and end cable servers. It's good enough to demonstrate some of the features. For example, we can use it to demonstrate the reliable streams and uh, Resumable sessions. That's a second part of <laughs> reliable streams feature. Just control panel to control a client. Uh, we can subscribe and see the logs here. These are the logs from the any cable client. So under the hood, it's use our client library, our SDK. Uh, that makes it possible to introduce new features uh, transparently for users. Now let's try to connect okay, another client. So we have two clients and we can send some message here. Hello. Now we broadcast the message and we see that, uh, so the user who initiate the, initiates the broadcast received the broadcast result and the broadcasted message is received by everyone. Now uh, let's open a new client. And for this one, I'm using Google Chrome due to its uh, network throttling capabilities. And here we use the same URL, web sockets, and we use extended version of the protocol. And we can define a special parameter. It's called initial streams history since. So that's a, it defines a time, time step. We want to receive messages since and ask them from the server. That's useful, especially for hotwire based applications when you render some data uh, right into the HTML and then you subscribe to updates. For example, you render comments to the post and then you have TurboStream subscribe to comments from this post but there is a gap between the time the page was rendered and Action Cable initial, initialized the subscription to updates. And it's the gap is actually like could be up to second. And so there could be new comments appearing in between your rendered HTML is received by the client and the subscription is performed. So you're not going to see them. And Actually, if you take a look at the, the pitfalls of real-time notification talk, I have a demonstration of uh, this effect 
using Basecamp as an example. So Basecamp has this problem. You can notice it. So you can miss comments or reactions if they arrive while you are loading the page. But here with extended protocol, uh, okay, let's go debug. We connect and subscribe and we receive this message here. Even though it was broadcasted a bit earlier than we created the client. Oh, okay, let me turn out to scroll off. We can take a look at the logs. So we have debug mode on here and we see a lot of stuff from any cable client. What's interesting for us is that outgoing message. So we subscribe, it's a tip, uh, kind of part of the action cable protocol, but we add additional parameter. It's called history and it contains uh, two values, sense and streams. So sense as a timestamp, Unix timestamp, number of seconds uh, of the in, so the place in time where we want to get messages from for this channel, actually for the streams where we, which we will be subscribing to while we subscribe to the channel. And then we receive the confirmed subscription. After that, we receive um, messages. So the message that we kind of missed. And after that, we also re receive um, somewhere here, yeah, confirm history. Uh, an acknowledgement message for history request. It's required to synchronize receiving new messages, which could happen again while we request in history and history. So, and that also allows us to deliver messages in the correct order to the client. And everything is done uh, simply by switching the protocol in the Ancable JS library. So now we subscribe here. We can send message from here. Hi. So everyone received it. Yeah, it's here. Let's enable auto scroll. Now um, to continue this demonstration, let me, so actually we have this WebSocket connection and we can go make it go offline using Chrome DevTools. Uh, let's wait a bit. Yeah, now it says sale connection, disconnecting, trying to reconnect and so on. So now this client is not connected and we can Send a message again. Yes, we see that everything works. Everyone who is alive is still receiving this message. And now, now throttling. And we see that the message immediately has been delivered to this client. And it's done with a similar mechanism, uh, send in history, but uh, okay. let me uh, zoom in here. We don't need this one anymore but a bit different. So we have this connection recovered and it's a different um, notification indicating that we not only restored the actual WebSocket connection, but also we recovered the connection state at the server, which means that we do not need to resubscribe or re-authenticate. That's what's called resumable sessions. So the only thing the client does after its connection is required is requesting history. It's a custom command called history. And now it passes some cryptic stuff like epoch and offset for the streams observed to precisely request history after that point in the stream, after that offset. And that's where the message is received. And again, as with the initial connection with timestamp um, for upper level code in the client side, there is no kind of a information about the restoration process or whatever. It just continue working as if there were no actual disconnection. So it's like just a lag of incoming messages or whatever. Yeah. So Emmanuel is asking, uh, where are the messages stored when a subscriber is offline? Yeah, that's a good question. So. Um, Okay, let me just maybe open uh, documentation. By the way, we upgraded our the look of our documentation because so we made the sidebar more concise and hid a lot of stuff under the sections because we have a lot of stuff here. So cache backends. So currently we support two cache backends as we call them uh, for streams and sessions. Uh, so the first one, the, ba the basic one is in memory. It's, it's suitable for kind of single node any cable installations. And with single any cable node, you can go pretty far. So a lot of applications 
don't need more. So, but anyway, it's just a single node. It stores in memory, and and that's it. And uh, another supported backend for storing history is Redis. Currently, we only ship it as a part of the Pro version. It allows storing data in Redis and access it from multiple nodes and keep them uh, kind of in sync. So it's a kind of distributed version of the backend for messages. Most important thing, if you want to really go deep into how things work, we have this documentation and we have diagrams showing how the message flows from the publisher. So say a Rails application to any cable and to eventually into clients. And it depicts uh, the new upgraded architecture which used internally. One thing that I wanted to highlight is that with this new architecture, we moved the pops up logic. So sending rebroadcast, retransmitting message within the cluster to lower down the stack of any cable. It's now responsibility of any cable, not your publisher. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, previously we used Redis uh, to broadcast messages to clustered installations of any cable. Because we use Redis pops up and every any cable go now just subscribe to single Redis channel channel. They call it channels, pops up channel and received all updates for all the streams through this channel. And every node, any cable node received all the messages. So it was fan out. Now when we need to store messages in the cache and we need to register them to provide identifiers and all that stuff. We must process every broadcasted message only once by the cluster. That's why we have this new diagram with Broker. And after it has been registered, it's retransmitted to other nodes in the cluster. And that technically made it possible to use HTTP in the production grade broadcasting adapter for any, for any cable in your Rails app, for example. So your Rails app no longer need any dependencies to use any cable. It can just use HTTP to send, to publish broadcasts and everything else is done by uh, any cable. And that opened a new possibility for us uh, more precisely. Now we can use any cable with other frameworks and even languages because we don't have any dependencies on particular libraries or concepts at the publisher side. It's just HTTP and you can send HTTP from wherever you want. And that's, that's what makes any cable full featured WebSocket server for hotwire independently, whatever you use. We don't have some examples like how to use any cable with Python, PHP. Uh, I'm not sure they're correct. I generated them with Copilot so, uh, and haven't tried them, but that's should provide a, an idea of how to send messages and sign streams because hotwire is sign streams and that's kind of a Rails internal mechanism, but we can re-implement it in every language. It's not that complicated. And so the question was where we store messages. So going back to the answer, we have in memory for single node and distributed backend based on Redis for clusters uh, in pro version for now. We will probably add something based on NATS and its embedded variant, which we already have in the future. So that would allow us to have any cable go to run without any external dependencies, even in clusters. I wanted also to show a quick demonstration of long polling while we're still using this demo application. Everyone is connected. Yeah. So let's see. For long polling demonstration, I'm actually going to use uh, HTTPI. So HTTPI is a Originally, it's a common line utility to perform HTTP requests where we, with a lot of useful features, it's, it's very popular, especially in Python community because it's written in Python. But recently they released uh, the desktop version, uh, very nice looking and very convenient to use. And here I should say that the Martians team was responsible for bringing it to life. That's why I've been using it for a while as a early adopter. But now we can use it, for example, to emulate long polling connection uh, to any cable server. And for that, I have a pretty fine collection of requests I can use. So that's the right long polling URL. So first thing, uh, so how long polling works? It's just a, a consecutive HTTP requests uh, waiting for new data 
to be broadcasted to a particular client and the request is terminated either if timeout occurs or when there is a new data to send to the client, right? So we need to make many requests to keep our connection kind of alive from the server point of view. And it all starts with the first, we call it connect request. It's just a post request with nothing here. And we receive type welcome session ID. That's kind of an action cable protocol encoded and HTTP. And we need to grab a unique poll identifier from it and uh, use it with all other requests, subsequent requests as a session identifier. That's how authentication works. So we can just send a JSON encoded command. Uh, it says session expired. Okay, I was probably talking too long. Let's try to obtain a new one. Okay. And subscribe. Yeah, confirm subscription. Here we can say poll. So this is a pull request. We just we don't send any commands. We just wait for new data to appear. And now we can send data from here. And it's here. It just appeared right away. And we can go polling again. And when there are going to be no data, I don't remember what's the default polling interval. It's probably 30 seconds. We will just receive no content. Similarly, we can perform actions. Just, just sending them at the Quest body, yeah, no content. And now we can say broadcast and we receive the broadcast messages right away. And we can see that we receive both messages, two of them, uh, not just one. And then we need to pull for the second one because there is some bufferization and aggregation at the server side. So basically we just emulating a real kind of WebSocket client uh, using just HTTP. So it's actually could be very interesting use case for using action connecting to action cable server even using like curl or whatever you have in mind so that also opens new possibilities uh for using any cable and platforms that do not support web sockets maybe or do not require web sockets so yeah that's just a funny thing to play with uh when you just uh you know want to something more uh, easier to digest probably than WebSockets. It's just HTTP, so, and it works. So that's long polling stuff. We also have some, this is my templates for HTTP RPC, by the way. We're not gonna play with them. It's just an example of the payload and uh, broadcast stuff, okay. yeah. So long polling is also part of Pro. That probably raised the question, how do we decide when to add something to Pro or open source? That's a tough question <laughs> because every feature we develop, we actually have this question. Our rule of thumb is that uh, open source should, fe feature should go to open source if it's required for people who just starting doing something with any cable for the, for smaller companies, for not like big corporate stuff. So that's why we put there that an, that's an app to run a full featured any cable instance with in a single node, probably right now it's a kind of a, that was another kind of a way to distinguish this since the introduction of Broker. So single node installations and everything is just suitable to single node installations to go to open source. But feature that required for companies of a larger size, like long polling, like you don't need long polling if you're building the MVP of your startup or whatever, because you're uh, very unlikely target, you know, Internet Explorer stuff or very close corporate networks. Uh, so you don't need this. So in terms of transports, we have something new kind of fit in between web sockets and long poly because well we decided to go with long poly because that's something that works everywhere and we don't need to write a very esoteric javascript code for internet explorer using some specialized apis so that was the demonstration of the playground playground is available at play.anycable.io you can try it but it's a very fresh project it's open source so feel free to contribute. But the main goal of it is to test different transports. So any cable client has a built-in long polling support and fallback system. So again, nothing should be done from your side to implement it. Actually, the very interesting part in the timeline is what's coming next, right? We want to continue delivering 
new features, first of all, and uh, kind of enhancements. So from the performance point of view, there are still some things that we plan to add, probably minor things. But most of the stuff uh, we working on right now is about features. That's where I would like to hear from you. What's the most anticipated feature of any cable or action cable, whatever, of your real-time server? I have some suggestions and code it into the slide. So, but if someone would like to jump in or if just type in the chat, let's start with the first one, presence, presence tracking. Then we want to introduce presence again at the part of the real-time server. That also covers the cases for reliable disconnects or reliable kind of a connection tracking. We're probably going to start with just reliable connection presence tracking, and then we build, we'll build an API, APIs on top of it. Speaking of transparency, as I started talking, so we want to add something in the middle between long polling and web sockets. And uh, the middle ground is server send events for consuming updates. Currently, they are supported by most browsers and being technically pure HTTP. So that should be good enough for everyone who doesn't care about Internet Explorer. And I showed an example of how service send events could be used with Action Cable or even Hotwire without any client side code, uh, like third party code, just with browser. Another feature that we will start at least investigating for the next release, let's call it Edge Channels. Previously, we actually had an experiment and it's called MRuby channels. The idea is to make it possible to implement your channel logic, you ch just to put your channel class right to the any cable go and avoid hitting your rail server or do not or you may not have any rail server actually. So it's like serverless functions and built into uh, the WebSocket server to provide some logic. We definitely gonna use something web assembly based, based so it would be possible to define edge channels, not only in Ruby, but in many other languages. So that brings new possibilities. We want to explore this direction. Some less anticipated, in my opinion, features, I call them broadcast filtering. So the idea is inspired by Laravel, PHP. Uh, they have an interesting option in, in their real-time component called Echo. They have an option to bro broadcast to everyone, but not self. So that's an option to send a broadcasted message to all the clients except the one who initiated the broadcast. Command acknowledgement messages, uh, that's very low level stuff, but that could be useful if you want to go all in WebSockets and heavily use the ability to perform actions through WebSockets. In this case, uh, Action Cable doesn't provide any acknowledgements. When you call perform and perform action in the channel, the client side has no idea whether the channel fa uh, the action failed or it was it succeeded or whatever. The, the biggest problem actually that we do not have uh, error handlers, error notifications to back to the client, not for subscriptions, not for regular commands. Since we already have the extended version of the protocol, we can add this to the protocol and uh, implement it actually at the any cable side again without touching action cable. Delta updates. The idea of Delta updates is to reduce the amount of data shipped to clients. And one thing I keep in mind is, again, Hotwire or any other HTML-based um, streaming, where we definitely need a way to minimize the amount of HTML sent over the wire. And it could be done because most of the HTML, especially like using some CSS frameworks like Tailwind, it's, it's static, doesn't change with uh, updates. So we just need to come up with some algorithm to send uh, partial updates to clients to improve the throughput. But that's also kind of a research project for now. Finally, uh, another research project as well is YJS integration. That's something we're looking at for a long time. And we think that it should be possible to um, implement, first of all, implement the YJS protocol at the client side. So you don't need to use Action Cable to connect with YJS. You can use YJS client libraries and with any cable and translate particular commands to your Rails server or other server. Um, and also it's about storing data required by YJS to perform collaborative features. Also to make it the responsibility of any cable. So only let you write your business logic using these features, not dealing with all the YJS stuff you need to care about when you're using this framework. I don't have ideas for the last one. Maybe you can share something. 